All right. We are back on the record in the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus Williams. And Mr. Williams is still present in his cell. The record should reflect. Um, and the video, as I, video and audio, as I had explained before, is still operational for him. All right. Madam Prosecutor, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Judge. We look forward to be sworn. Right. So I'm going to swear from at this point, you're about to get closed. You have questions, so State your first and last name and spell it for the record, please. Uh, Daniel Iverson, D A N I V E R S O. May inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Iverson, how are you currently employed? Currently employed with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General. How long have you been there? 16 months now. Oh, where were you previously employed? For the uh, previous 29 and a half years, I was a sworn police officer in the state of Michigan, 26 and a half of those with the Ann Arbor Police Department. Of those 12, 13 years as a major crimes detective. Okay. As a major crimes detective for the Ann Arbor Police Department, were you what, what is referred to as an officer in charge of the case that we are here for in court today, Alyssa Williams uh, and the defendant Isaiah Williams? Yes. When did you take over as the officer in charge of this case? Uh, sometime in the spring of 2011. Who was the previous uh, detective or detectives on this case? Uh, originally, was assigned to Detective uh, William Canada in 1983 through 1987. Then there was Detective uh, Seyfried, Cy and then uh, Detective Caldwell, and then it uh, languished in uh, historical open cases for several years where I received 2011. And did you remain as the officer in charge of the case from 2011 until the point at which it was charged and you left the department? Yes. Okay. And in terms of taking over a case of this magnitude, a cold case as it were, what is one of the first things that you did? First thing I did is I wanted to gather all the information I could to collaborate with the original police reports that were in existence and track those down. That to require me to go into the archives and the inner police department, try to gather as much information as I could. Also, pardon me, go to the courthouse and see what records were still available. It also required me to contact all the previous detectives in the, in the case, the ones who had any contact with it to gather more information that might not have been captured in those original police reports. As far as the police reports um, starting back in 1983, were you able to recover those pre police reports from the archives and review all of those? Yes. As far as speaking to the previous detectives, were you able to do that as well? No. Okay, tell us why. Uh, Sergeant Bill Canada passed away probably within two years of his retirement before I was a member of the police department. Uh, I tried to track down his uh, frequent partner, who was also, I believe, his relative. He'd also passed away. Uh, I tried to talk to all the detectives in the 1980s. I found one or two that were not primarily involved, primarily involved with the case, but had bits and pieces from their memory about it. Were you able to at least review all of these detectives' old reports, their interviews, et cetera, to be able to bring yourself up to speed on what they had done in the investigation? Yes, I You had indicated in terms of uh, interviewing witnesses, did you interview um, all the living witnesses that you could in this case? Yes. Did that include Mr. Williams' siblings in this case? Yes. Betty Peters was one of those siblings. She testified yesterday. Did you interview her? Yes. Um, Denise Frazier Daniel was uh, one of the people that testified yesterday. Did you interview her? Yes. What about Elizabeth Reese and her children? Yes. Attorney Molly Reno? Yes. What about Mary Leslie Bryant? Yes. Um, one of the names that had come up in the investigation was a Diane Taylor that Miss um, uh, Frazier Daniel had said she would, lived with when she was separated from the defendant in the state of Ohio. Were you able to interview her? Tell me why not. Uh, after an exhaustive search, checking various uh, internet databases and information, uh, last known location of her was in uh, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, where it was uh, possibly at a homeless shelter. Uh, contact with them indicated she had passed away. When you were reviewing Sergeant Canada, his initial investigation, um, can you tell us, was there an investigation done as far as efforts to locate Olisa Williams alive at that time? Yes. Were there efforts at that time to locate Olisa Williams deceased in terms of identifying remains at that time? Yes. Were there remains um, from a baby in the fall of 1982 from New York? 
Yes. Can you speak a little bit about that and whether that was fruitful in the investigation? Uh, for the record, Sergeant Canada had come out of uh, about this case looking for any unidentified uh, remains, human remains that matched Elisa's physical. He had gone out and contacted various uh, medical facility where Elisa was seen and got her height, weight, and information entered it into the database at that time. He was in contact by a detective at the New York City Police Department because they had recovered a small female child who matched, somewhat matched the demographics of Elisa. She was found floating in the Hudson River. From my review of the police reports, there was someone seen dumping that body, uh, an African-American female. But uh, it turns out the photographs were then sent to him through the U.S. Postal System, taking weeks to get there. He then reviewed those photos with uh, Denise and with Elizabeth Reese, and they both indicated it was not what we said. Okay. Um, and you indicated he had followed up with some medical chart information for Lisa, and, and did that match her physical measurements either? No. Okay. You indicated you had reviewed all the Ann Arbor Police Departments. Are there other department police reports that you reviewed in this case? Yes. Can you tell us about some of those? Well, I thought it was important to have a criminal investigation to establish a timeline of the offenders, um, locations, and behaviors. So I went about a quest to looking at every single police department that had ever had contact with Isaiah Williams in the United States. It's quite a vast network of agencies, but many departments throughout Illinois and Ohio and Michigan had contact with him through the years of 1981 through present day. And in terms of reviewing them, did you also obtain them and put them in your file as part of the discovery in this case? Yes, I did. Okay. You talked about court records. What court records did you ultimately obtain and review in this case? Uh, I obtained uh, circuit court records in Washington County, also from a uh, briefly testified in the wrongful death suit of his son, Isaiah, in a car accident. Obtained that also. In part of obtaining these records, are you trying to, to do anything with respect to your interviews of, of different witnesses that you've been interviewing? Well, one of the main points, this seems such a unusual allegation uh, that one had been in our historical archives for so long as an open case, I thought it was important to collaborate as much as I could possibly of what the witnesses had been, had already said and what they were currently going to be saying. Two of the specific uh, pieces of exhibits that have already been admitted and Judge, these were admitted as part of exhibits, I believe 23 through 55 already. Um, part of the court documents, there were two arrest cards in this matter, one from the Inkster Police Department in 1982. Um, another one is the arrest card. I've redacted some of it to um, take out portions I did not think were relevant to our case or to Elizabeth Reese's case. Or to may I approach your honor? You may. These are people's exhibits 33, Detective Iverson, and 42. Do you recognize these documents? What is 33? Uh, this is an arrest card from the, uh, looks like, Kingston Police Department. Okay, and did you discuss a September 1982 uh, alleged assault in the city of Inkster with Denise Frazier Daniel? Yes, I did. Okay, is that card reflect an arrest with respect to that assault? Yes. Did you also obtain a police report with respect to that assault? Yes, I did. Okay, what about uh, People's Exhibit 42? Is that also what's commonly referred as an arrest card? Yes. What are some of the things? Well, let me ask it this way. Is there contempt proceedings that are reflected on there as far as arrests for Mr. Isaiah Williams? Yes. Um, did you review the court documents in this matter from the Washtenaw County Family Court? Yes. Were there uh, contempt proceedings with respect to Isaiah Williams in February of 1983? Yes. Did those arrests corroborate that? Yes, it did. Um, was there also an arrest in 1984 with respect to um, an alleged assault from Elizabeth Reese that Mr. Williams was ultimately convicted of? Yes. Okay. One of the also the things that um, I believe that you looked into are, are tips. Do you know approximately how many tips the department has garnered from 1982 and forward on this case? Uh, 
I remember uh, placing them on an Excel spreadsheet, but the exact number, I think it was close to 100. And, and did any of those tips from the public ever produce any um, viable information with respect to Olisa Williams being found alive or deceased? Yeah. Okay. Um, you talked already about reviewing the investigation for a deceased baby and remains from fall of 1982 in New York. Did you yourself, were you involved with some potential people who came forward um, claiming to be Olisa Williams that ultimately did not end up being her? Yes, I am. Okay, do you recall a person by the name of Keisha and the last name being P-A-L-A-G-E? Yes. Can you tell us about that? We had contacted the uh, Amber Police Department after seeing an age progression image on the National Center for Missing Age Prevention website. She was that person. So uh, I investigated her back, uh, additional information from her, contacted her family members, which I was able to obtain through independent resources and contacted her simply, I think her mother specifically, and got details. Okay. Was her DNA ultimately obtained um, compared with Denise and it was not not Miss Plage or Plage? I'm not sure if I'm correct. Okay. Was there also a, a person by the name of Cyrell, S-Y-R-E-L-L, Nunali, N-U-N-N-A-L-L-Y, a 2021 tip? Yes, that's the one I, I thought. Sorry, confused those okay. names. I contacted that last second tip her mother and her family members. Did we? Did you con confirm? Excuse me, through a birth certificate that she was not Alyssa Williams. Yes. Okay. Did you also confirm through her her biological family that she was not Alyssa Williams? Okay. Are CPS records also records that you reviewed and obtained in in this matter? Yes. Was that also part of of this this corroboration that we're talking about with talking to Denise Fraser Daniel? And Elizabeth Reese. Yes. Okay. You also interviewed someone by the name of Mary Leslie Bryant. Did you obtain documents in this matter with respect to Miss Leslie Bryant? Yes. What were those documents? Miss Bryant had had kept her own records in a file. She was uh, she expressed to me how frightened she was of Mr. Williams and had kept this information because she wanted to make sure her. Open investigation since the end of the it was a warrant at the time for his arrest. That she wanted to keep those records in case he was ever arrested. Proof. We've talked about your investigation and the department's investigation um, into uh, Olissa and potential unidentified remains. You heard Sarah Krabs testify today, correct? Yes. Was she the inspector? I think she was not an inspector at the time, but was she one of the officers you worked with in trying to identify um, remains that could have been potentially belonging to Alyssa Williams? Yes. Did that ever, uh, was that ever fruitful in finding Alyssa Williams? No. Did you also look into the possibility of Alyssa being alive? Yes. Okay. Um, what kind of things did you look into to see if Alyssa could have been alive? When I contacted the, Mr. Williams' siblings, there was always a working theory that he had somehow uh, placed her with relatives out of state. So I spent a significant amount of time contacting these relatives and this relatives and seeing if anyone was any truth to that. I was able to locate some distant relatives of his in Alabama, and everyone indicated that they didn't even really know him at all. Could not there was a uh... In, in you were sitting here during the testimony. I know you reviewed the documents. Uh, Sherfield or Sherfeld, Alabama, in the affidavit. Did you follow up on that particular city? Yes, there was there was discussions uh, in the reports that perhaps he had gotten an appointment there with the municipality of Sheffield, Alabama. So I contacted the captain of Sheffield, Alabama Police Department, asked him to check the human resources records for that. He later contacted me and said he had checked their records all the way back to that time period. Okay. Were you able to ever check um, any tax records or student loan documents against um, the information that you had, Olisa Williams, to see if anything had been opened up under her information? Yeah, I, I contacted the United States Secretary of Social Security Administration Office of Inspector General, I also contacted the U.S. Department of Education Office of Inspector General, requested they uh, try to attempt to locate her for her Social Security number. Any usage, they both indicated there was no ever any record of a student loan or a tax return filed in her name. Also, subsequently found out that, that because she was missing as a child, 
her birth certificate and her social security number had been flagged in the system, and no one had ever inquired on it or had uh, used those. In terms of, I know that you reviewed the documents in this case, both court and police report and interviewed witnesses. Uh, were you provided with Mr. Williams' statement about an alleged abduction in Island Park in Ann Arbor? Yes. Can you tell us what Island Park is? Can you tell us a little bit about Island Park? So Island Park is located just up the north side of the University of Michigan Hospital uh, off of Maiden Lane. It's about a six and a half acre uh, park. It has the Huron River that runs through it. One acre of that six and a half acres is a little island. It has a Greek um, statue, I mean, a facility on it, like a pavilion Perfect. that you go to. There are two parking lots there. There's a lower parking lot and an upper parking lot as you travel east to the park. There's one park parking lot and then a higher one above. So upper and lower parking. Is there a body of water in that park? Yeah, the Huron River, a branch of it runs through that. Do, do you know whether um, any department has ever searched the Huron River, whether it was 1982 or present date? Um, I talked to a detective who, who said she recalled from that time period that they had drudged the Huron River, but I could never collaborate that with any I also contacted the U.S. Coast Guard because of the currents flowing down Lake Huron. Anything there had ever been recovered, let me also contact the Ohio jurisdictions along that uh, pathway and the Canadian side of the board to see if the remains had ever been recovered. And no, she, she never recovered. In reviewing the court documents, specifically the affidavit, one of the affidavits filed by Mr. Williams' attorney, um, was there information provided in there that? the defendant had been living during the specific time period of 1982 with family in the city of Ann Arbor. Yes. And that he also had been residing temporarily at a motel in the city of Ann Arbor. Yes. Did the doc say, that same document we're talking about indicate that he had gone to Alabama uh, in July of 1982? Yes. And that's the investigation that you did in following up on that particular fact in this case. Have you interviewed the defendant, Isaiah Williams, multiple times in this case? Yes. Okay, let's talk about a couple of those interviews. Um, was he interviewed also by your predecessor, Sergeant Canada? Yes, and did you review the statements with respect to that? Yes. Okay. Did that include the, the statement about the abduction at Island Park, if you know? I believe that Sergeant Canada confronted him with that information that he provided. Was there any other information that you're aware of that was provided to Sergeant Canada at that time? Okay. Let's talk about February 20th, 2014. Was that your first time, to the best of your memory, that you interviewed Isaiah Williams? Yes. Okay. Um, where was that interview? Where did that take place? At the Mr. Williams residence inside the city of Detroit. Was Mr. Williams at his home in custody or out of custody? Out of custody. Was he free to leave? Yes. Was he free to refuse to talk to you? Yes. Okay. Um, tell me about that conversation. Finally, my purpose was when going to his residence um, to ask him and make sure I had, from what I had learned from the other people that he had contact with, is oftentimes he would be very agitated about child support issues. So I wanted to make it perfectly clear when I went there to him that I was not there to try to collect any child support or anything like that. We just needed to find answers where. Whatever happened to Elisa. Okay. So we're just trying to find out where she went. Did Mr. Williams indicate um, that he had um, any knowledge about Elisa? So he never heard of her. Didn't know her. Okay. Um, when he, did he indicate whether he knew someone by the name of Denise or Denise Williams or Denise Frazier Daniel? So he didn't know her. Okay. Um, did he indicate to you um, anything about his memory? Yeah, he said that... Uh, 2014, in November 2014, he said that uh, he had been at a bar and the bartender had spiked his drink. He had drove away, had crashed his car, and had sustained a uh, closed head injury, and he had no memories of his life before 1995 when the traffic accident happened. Okay. Not at all. So he indicated to you that this was from a car accident. Correct. And at that time, did he indicate to you anything um, that the head injury was due to a poisoning? Did he indicate to you at that time it was due to anything that had happened to him in prison that something had been implanted in his head? Uh, he said he had no memory of his prison tenure, prison at all. Okay. 
Did you ask Mr. Williams at that time if he had taken Alyssa Williams to the state of Alabama? What did he indicate to you? Does he didn't know her? He would uh, get kind of agitated and say, how, how would I take anybody I don't, I don't even know? Um, at that time, if you asked him about his, his years in prison and he indicated he didn't have any memory of that, did he indicate whether he had any memories of the, the decade of the 1980s? He said he had no memory of the 1980s. Um, did he talk to you at all about brain control and anything like that? Do you recall him talking to you about that? Yeah, he did mention that uh, he believed the police could involve themselves in mind control. And he had written letters to various senators, I think it was, on that issue. After this interview, did you invite or talk to Mr. Williams about possibly interviewing him and speaking with him again? Yeah, Mr. Williams had expressed that he had traveled back from Alabama and requested his doctor uh, to help him jog his memory of his life before the traffic crash. So that gave me an opportunity to express to him that I had developed some timeline of his life that could help him with that. Invited him to come to the station and I would be willing to drive to the residence to help him with that. Was he receptive to that? No. Okay. Um, would he commit to meeting with you again? Before your next interview with Mr. Williams, did you make efforts at that time to follow up on some information uh, about a clinic or, or organization in Alabama? He mentioned that he had traveled to Alabama to go to the uh, Alabama, Alabama Brain Institute, I think it was, uh, for treatment. And that's where he had met that doctor who had referred him to you know, eventually get treatment and come back to Michigan that would help him with his memory. Did you contact, the, I think it's the Alabama, does the head institute sound right? Yes. Okay. Did you contact contact that organization? Yes. Sir. Were you able to confirm whether they were a treatment organization? You know, they were purely advocacy. Okay. Um, this advocacy organization, did they do any medical treatment at all? No. Um, this medic or this advocacy organization, did they require any medical documentation to allow Isaiah into their program? No. And you confirmed that with the 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 institute. Yep, I talked directly to a person who knew him, he was there, and had just received a referral for his records to go to Detroit. Was that Debbie Dean? Yes, it was. Um, March 1st, 2014, um, does that sound correct as to the next date you tried to speak with Mr. Williams? Yes, Okay. At that time, uh, where do you recall trying to speak with him at? Uh, during our February of 2014, right. He had um, expressed how busy he was, and he was pointing to us his calendar. And I noticed that he was set for one tennis appointment with his daughter at the University of Michigan Dental School here in Ann Arbor. So, myself and the Texas Army, we were It appears uh, on that date you made uh, two separate attempts to talk to Mr. Isaiah Williams on that date. Yes. Tell me, were you successful in speaking with him? Yes. Okay, tell me what, uh, what if anything, was said. He said he, he had no memory, but he might be able to recall something if I were able to produce some kind of court documents related to the identity of Denise, Fraser Daniels, and Denise Harris, as she was known before his marriage. And so uh, I did know why we were there. He became, he started sweating profusely. He had nervous and fidgety, and his voice got raised with us, almost like he was trying to make a team in front of everybody. So we left and then went to back to the station, retrieved the court documents that he kind of outlined what he'd like to see. And we came back around. Did he want to see those documents when you came back with them? Yes. Okay. Did he look at those documents? Yep. He sat down, looked at them. We gave him plenty of space and we sat there and watched him for about 15 minutes read over the documents. Okay. And did you proceed to ask him a series of questions then? Yes. Did he answer those? Yes. Did he have any memory at that point? Uh, he claimed he had no memory. He did not know who I was even talking about. During this particular interview in March, um, was Mr. Williams, in your opinion, cooperative with answering your questions? Yeah. Okay. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Was was he evading you in any way? He would never answer questions directly. He was evasive. And when I pointed it out to him, he got more agitated and started causing more of a scene. Fast forward to the year 2021, um, did you have the occasion to go see Mr. Williams in the city of Chicago? 
Okay. Can you tell me why it is that you went to Chicago? Was he living there at the time? Yes. Okay. So where is it that you ultimately had this interview of Mr. Williams in Chicago? Mr. Williams at 501 North Central in Chicago. It's a, it's a four story former YMCA, has about 300 single room residencies there. They all share common bathrooms on the floors and uh, found in there. When you first began interviewing Mr. Williams, did he indicate this time whether he had any memory of, of the particular people you were asking about? So he had no memory. Okay. What was his reasoning um, on this particular occasion for his lack of memory? He said that he had been poisoned. Is, the person that affected his memory, he had no memory of his life before it's poisoned. Is this the first time he brought up the poisoning to you? Did he bring up the car accident to you this time? I don't believe he did it this time. He did it personally, not professionally. Uh, when you brought up the subject of Olisa Williams, um, what was his demeanor? How did he act? Well, I found it interesting. We had spent several minutes there with him and he hadn't even asked why I was there. So I told him that we were there to talk about what would happen to Elisa Williams. He then got really nervous and um, started straightening things up in his, his little apartment and seemed to get kind of agitated and nervous about it. And so we we said we had, I was there with another detective, uh, Eugene Eisenberg. I expressed to him he had information that might help him with his memory since he didn't remember Denise or Liz Reese or anything. So I produced his uh, wedding marriage license. How did he react when you showed him his marriage license to Denise? He seemed to look at it for a significant amount of time. It was kind of awkward. And then he eventually said that uh, that signature had been forged. So he denied the signature and the marriage license was even his. Right. He had didn't, did he say he did not even remember the marriage initially? Yes, he did. But then denied the signature was his. Did you ask him about Mary Leslie Bryant? Yes. Did he claim whether he remembered her or not? No, he didn't remember her at all. Did you ask him about his time in prison in the 80s? I didn't. Did you bring up his prior statement about this, this alleged abduction um, in the city of Ann Arbor that he had told Judge Campbell about in Washtenaw County? Yes, what was his response to that? Doesn't remember any of that. Did you bring up the topic you've mentioned before that that you didn't want to bring up in your first interview, child support? Did you bring it up this time? No, he did. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, he was talking about some woman had uh, gone to court and claimed that when child children with her and so forth. And I think I asked clarify your questions about who you met. So it was a list woman named Liz, and we discussed this kid's stuff, yeah. Um, what was his demeanor or emotional state when he was talking about this, about the child support and being taken to court for child support? He got agitated because he was claiming that child support was still being a social security disability check every month, and that was really a source of contention for him. It seemed to anger him more. When talking about Elisa and Denise, did he indicate at any time that, that you should bring Denise to him? Yes. Tell me about that. He said he might be able to help me if I just brought Denise to him so he could talk to her and see if he would never hear that. Okay. So he made this request that you should bring Denise Frazier Daniel to him. Right. Okay. Um, at the end of the interview, when you were talking about child support again, how did he react to this and how did the interview ultimately end? And when we, talk, we were talking about that, he got so agitated, he told us that we need Okay. Yeah. And did you do that? Yes. Okay. Um, this this interview, was he out of custody? Yes. Was he free to come and go as he pleased? Yes. Okay. Was this interview captured on body cam footage? Yes, it was. Okay. You've talked about this statement that he first gave you about this um, brain injury being from a car accident. Then you said in 2021, he mentioned a poisoning. Um, he never mentioned a chip in prison being implanted in his head to the best of your memory? Okay. You, you heard some of the testimony in court, correct? From the children? Okay. And sitting here today, you don't have any memory of that. Okay. 
after you visited Isaiah Williams, um, did you learn who his emergency contact was at that time? Yeah, in May of 21, yeah. the uh, Plaza Arms had listed his place of residence as his son, Scotty Williams, was his emergency contact. Okay, and did you in turn then go interview Mr. Scotty Williams? Yes. Okay. Uh, as part of your investigation, did you investigate this this claim by Mr. Williams that he has this close head injury and therefore lacks sufficient memory to remember his life or any of the people in it. Yes, okay. You've already talked about going to the Alabama or talking to the Alabama head Institute. Um, did you take statements from his ex wives and his children? Yes. Was that in an effort to sort of try to get information about this alleged brain injury? Right. Um, did you also obtain some medical records in this case? Yes, Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Detective Iverson, I am approaching with People's 57 and 50, People's Composed 58. Can you tell me if you write for 57? Yes, I do. What is 57? These are medical records from the St. Joe Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor that could be search warrant. And what about Exhibit 58? These are medical records pertaining to Isaiah Williams from the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Is that for a, a two-year period of time, I believe 1995 to 1997? Yes, it is. Um, you obtained both sets of those medical records, correct? Yes. And you have reviewed those records thoroughly in your investigation of his alleged brain injury and lack of memory. Yes. Your Honor, I would ask that people 57 and 58 be admitted. Any objection? No objection. For 57, 58 are admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's talk about first the medical records for 57, the St. Joseph medical records. Um, those records indicate they are from February 10th, 1994 to February 11th, 1994, correct? Right. What is the, the subject or the reason from the best of your memory on why Mr. Williams was being treated at that time? Those records collaborate the information that Mr. Williams has shared with us in February of 2014 that uh, this car accident he claimed to have been involved in. He, later in our interview on the February 2014, towards the end of it, I asked for if he had any records because he had a large briefcase full of documents similar to the one he brought in the court, if he had perhaps his traffic crash report. He then produced one to us from the February 1994. Were you able to, in those records, see uh, one note of a, a self-report of a of a head injury in the in that record? Yes. Was there any um, information in the totality of those records of any follow-up uh, testing sent to any neurologist or anything of that 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 like? Um, was there a CT of the uh, brain that was in that rec in those records? Yes. Did anything come back unusual or abnormal in that CT scan that you saw? Was there a CT of the head in those records as well? Yes. Was that negative? It was. Okay. Was there neuro checks that were completed and that were documented in those records? Yes. Were those normal or abnormal? Normal. Okay. Was there anything in those records? Well, let me ask this. Um, does it indicate in there that he was released to a relative, like a sibling? Yes. Okay. Is there anything in those records from St. Joseph Hospital that indicates Mr. Williams left that hospital exhibiting lack of memory, memory loss, or amnesia? Um, was there a doctor that you ultimately followed up with from those records and did a, did an interview with? Yes. Okay, who was that? I've had to refer my report. Okay, if I, if if I refresh your memory with Doctor Cropsey, Cropsey? Yeah. Yes. okay, does that sound familiar to you? Yes. Um, was there any information you were ever provided that there was a follow up neurological exam or anything like that that was uh, ordered by Doctor Cropsey? Yeah. Okay. As far as the Ohio records. Um, the records from 1995 to 1997, um, there's indications in there that Mr. Williams indicates he had been in a car accident, correct? Okay. What kind of injuries are reported by Mr. Williams or symptoms of injuries does he report in those records? It's almost exclusively for back injury. Okay. Um, did you review one 1995 November PT record where he reports a closed head injury. Yes, is there anything else in those records by way of neurological exams for a closed head injury? Is there anything in there reflecting that Mr. Williams had reported amnesia or lack of memory about who he was? Okay. 
One moment, Your Honor. No further questions. Thank you, Detective Ivers. Cross examination. Good afternoon. So uh, is it fair to say that the checks and the investigations that you did on the birth certificate and the social security number, all of that was done basically searching the name Olisa Smith, correct? Melissa Williams. Melissa Williams. Right. So you weren't using any other name or any other social security numbers or any other dates of birth, correct? No. So if Elisa Williams assumed a different name and a different social security number, your investigation wouldn't have shown that, correct? Okay. And you said that you could not find anybody to corroborate that back in 82, 83, that the Huron River had been dredged at that time, correct? Okay. And um, the police reports and the arrest records and everything you research, none of them showed any child abuse or any violent actions towards a child, correct? As it relates to Mr. Williams. Well, I mean, there were domestic violent incidents, correct? With right. his spouses and ex-girlfriends. Right, there was one of his children from his current, well, his last marriage, there was a child girl. Were they, Tied to Mr. Williams was Mr. Williams subsequently convicted and sentenced for those? Okay, so he was not convicted or arrested for that, correct? Okay, thank you. Just briefly. Yes. In review of those CPS records, um, who was Kimberly in the care and custody of when she sustained those injuries? Okay, and was did CPS take action with respect to Kimberly based on those injuries? Yes. As far as any other social security or any other name, were you ever provided any of that information for Olisa Williams to be able to check into that? No. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Sir, you may step back. Thank you. Thank you. People have no further witnesses. We just would ask for a brief second to set up the computer. All right. Any witnesses for the defense? Oh, Your Honor. All right. We're going to step off a bit more. I got to make a quick phone call. She's going to set up her computer and then I'll come back. Okay. All right.